Hey, how you all doing? Tammy C. Walker, the owner of Dreams Are a Reality. I created this channel to provide light and love. I want to talk about success today. I would suggest that you grind or go hard in the paint in silence. People don't talk about being successful in some of the negative parts that can come with it for one hit that like button before i get started <laughs> and be so kind as to subscribe to dreams are reality i create this channel to inspire others i've dealt with depression and grief i have had a life that i did not like and a little bit later in life after 40 i went back to school got my master's in social work and I'm on my way to starting my own practice in the next few weeks, waiting on Illinois. Come on now, come through with my my clinical license so I can get so I can get the party cracker lacking. But yeah, that's why I create this channel. You can have the love of your life. You can have the house, the car, the house and car. Those are easy things. But you really want to have peace, and the best peace you can have is a healthy mental health as well as physical. Health is wealth, as my God sister says. She knows she's right. But yeah, with success, it also comes. I hate to talk about jealousy and stuff like that. I don't even like spending a lot of energy on it. But it does, you all. It really does. And the thing is, like with me, okay, I have to work two jobs. My first job is not as demanding. It is. It can be. It's up and down. It depends on the time of the year. But my second job is a constant grind. I'm a therapist part-time. But as a therapist, one thing I guess people don't know if they don't do the work, you have to always put your notes in the system. You have to create a treatment plan when you get new clients or patients, whichever you refer that to. You have to watch your billing. Although somebody else does our billing, it could be errors or omissions. So you have to constantly watch that. When you get a new client a potential new client and inquiry me personally i try to respond within 48 hours i read something recently that therapists are not responding to inquiries i know they're overwhelmed but that's not cool because we never know if someone on the other side is dealing with suicidal ideation or you know really something severe all the mental health challenges are severe to me or serious so we should treat them as such. Even when my books are full, like now I'm starting to get full, especially on Saturdays, I'll refer out. I have, you know, people I know with their own practice or it's people in our practice that, you know, may have an opening. So I don't think we should be ignoring clients or patients, but hey. And let's see what else is in the actual therapy itself. Typically, I do two clients after my first job um on mondays and tuesdays and sometimes i might have to end up doing three per an evening and i do monday tuesday thursday and i do saturday but i hate to say it, it's even dipping into some of my sundays and i'm talking like two or three people so that's just how busy i've been this is ever since covid but i thank god and i used to kind of shy away from the couples but it seems like all of a sudden I'm getting more and more couples, but you know what you all, if I can assist a couple in learning to communicate better, learning to love again, to trust each other again, to come closer, I feel like that was worth going and getting that master's degree. So that's why I do do the couple. I do, you know, have couples counseling because I feel like it's really helpful for the state of our world. The world needs more love and we need these couples to stay together. Mostly I deal with married couples, but some are engaged or, you know, long term. So we just want some love. But yeah, once you get, I said all of that, and, and forgive me, you are, I tend to ramble, but I always have a reason for it. I was coming back to that. People see your success, they see your money. They see how you live or they may see that you're generous, but they're not going to, you know, you get off work, 
from one job, you take a quick nap or you get a bite to eat, and then you jump back on a computer for another two, three hours. They're not going to do that. And that's, that's what I don't like about je- I don't like about jealousy. They don't see what you do to get to where you are. They only see the outcome. Listen to me. I have had a car that broke down. Every time you turn around, something's wrong with that car. And I went through that for years. I have paid the bank several bank fees years ago. Over and over. Bank fees, bank fees. And you know what? I vowed. I was like, you know what? I'm not paying another insufficient fund fee. And I could clearly and truly say I've been gone. I have gone years without doing that because you talk about two insufficient fund fees i i and i'm assuming they still 35 dollars because like i said i haven't paid them in years and i i vow not to um two two thirty five dollars you're talking about seventy dollars that's almost a hundred bucks we can't be giving that to i have bank of america or, or chase or whoever you have no 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 we're not giving our money to banks no well, yeah, I've been I've been at the bottom. I've been at the bottom. I really have. And for me, what's constantly on my mind is my age. And how is it going to look, Tammy, when you retire? Right now, being single, unmarried, I don't have kids. I put the pressure on myself. And I told my sister that. I was like, I'm all I got. And I'm not trying to slight her or anybody else. But what I'm saying is, if I become ill, if I become, you know, if I get to the point where I can't work, I got a lot on the line. Who's going to pay my rent? And no, I don't like living with people. So I definitely would like to keep my nice space. Who's going to run my practice? And that's something I have to think about. God forbid something happened to me. I have to offload my clients onto somebody I trust. And that's another thing. All clinicians are not the best. And and I've noticed this. Some, they don't follow up. And so I'm a stickler with that kind of stuff. Like I tell people and tell people, I am not the best clinician. I do do good because I really care. I'm sure I messed up, cross a boundary. You know, I don't do it all right. I would never get on here and say that, but I care deeply. And I feel like... um, the social work, I'm a social worker. So we have a code of ethics that I try to abide by because these, you start messing up, you'll get your license revoked. So yeah, I'm just saying that's my story, but what's yours with success? Where are you trying to go? And don't talk about it. Oh, I got, you know, I did so good. I know this month I made $4,000 extra. You don't need to tell people that because the more you talk about your money, the more they're going to put, they're going to have their hand out. Now, me personally, I make a little extra or if, I have, if I'm if i doing okay, I try to help somebody that maybe is starting out their business or their entre- young entrepreneur or, you know, people say, I want to get to social work. Can you talk to me? I try to help people by, you know, giving back. Sometimes you can give back by giving somebody a $20 gift card. It doesn't have to be extravagant. But just pay it forward some type of way. Paying it forward could also be listening to someone or helping them with their business plan. It doesn't have to always be money. But yeah, with success, it comes, um, a lot of responsibility comes with success. A lot of energy is being expounded. Um, some sleepless some nights, sometimes you don't get to sleep as much because you, you are planning for your next adventure. And... I've just noticed people look at you and think you have the best life. But over the last nine years, I've been grinding just to get to where I'm at. I had to, it took me 2015 to 2018 to even get the degree, two internships for free from 2016, 2017, 2017, 2018. I did all that stuff for free, 16 hours a week for free, 22 hours a week for free for 10 months. But people, they don't want to have that conversation. Or you're the oldest, one of the oldest, older students in the class. My my classmates, 27, 30. I'm sitting in there, 44, 45. Like, people don't talk about that. You're up to 2, 3 in the morning, banging out papers, doing statistics as a, a more mature woman. It wasn't easy, you know? And, and 
honestly, when I went back to school, I had just got better from cancer a year and a half prior. So I went from being ill to school. I don't brag. I always say it was God. And I always try to tell people what she doing, what he doing, what they're doing. You too can do it. All of us have it in us. We have it in us. You got to go to the bottom of your feet, pull it up all the way to the crown of your head. And we all have tenacity. We all have grit. We all can be inspired. We all have that talent in us, that gift that God gave us. Many times we have to tap into it. And the way you get to it is to take a risk. If you think you're going to get through life, playing it safe, I'm just going to stay safe. I'm just going to work my job. I'm not going to make no waves. I'm not going to do nothing extra. Then that's what you get. And I don't blame people when they play it safe. That's fine. Because some people, they just want a simple life. They don't want a whole lot of rigmarole. But rigmarole still finds us. Even when you think you're safe, you're not safe. They still lay you off. Even when you think you're safe, sometimes a relative will get sick. Even when you think you're safe, sometimes you fall sick or have an injury. Nobody's safe in this world. That's what people have to understand. You can play it safe. You're never safe because there's always something that's going to happen. So you may as well take a risk and live your life and do something you love. I did this YouTube channel. I started the channel many years ago. I wasn't consistent. You know, you have to learn how to do YouTube unless you really are good with social media or algorithms and all the SEO information, you know, all of that stuff. That's how you get to grow your channel. But this year, I just kept cranking the videos out. I did these, I did this channel when I went through a breakup and I would be so sad someday. I said, make a video, make a video. It wouldn't be about my breakup though. I would just do it because I have a lot of information in my head. And I'm like, just help somebody else. Stop feeling sorry for yourself. Make a video. And I kept doing that every year, especially around COVID 2020, 2021. Make another video. Make another video. Next thing you know, I had like 400 videos. I have over 600 videos. And some was just, eh, you know, but it got better. I got better with the thumbnail. I got better with my tags. I found my niche. And people really love to talk about buying a home, and they love relationship stuff, which I love relationship stuff. Now, with the relationship piece, I think you could overdo it with thinking about it, and I, that's what I tend to do, overthink, and it's, it's really not that serious, you all. It's really not, and I, and, and I know for a fact, because I did this in like 07, once you take the importance off of something, it comes to you. That's how it is with jobs with me. I'd be like, eh, I'm applying for this job. Eh. And just throw it to the wind and, and boom, the, the stuff comes back. I recently applied for some jobs just, you know, just to see because it's tough working with kids. And I'm older, so I'm, I'm all about my mental health. So I threw some stuff out there and, and those people responded. I got requests right away for interviews. But after I kept re-re- rereading the job descriptions, I was like, no, I just can't be stressed out and run a practice. So, yeah, I'm I'm just going to try to stick where I'm at and, and make some internal moves. But, yeah, when you don't put emphasis on a relationship or success, that's when it happens. So I'm saying that for me with this YouTube channel, I just start cranking out videos about relationship information, how I feel, what I've gone through, and it hit. It hit. The first one was why how a woman can seem desperate or something like that and that one got probably five thousand views now they really like why being too nice can backfire and that is that's a fact i wrote i just did that video because and i didn't even get on camera it's a podcast like this one is going to be and it's up to one i think one over a thousand views maybe 1200 views now So, long story short, whatever God gave you, whatever dream you have, whatever goal you have, keep going. Don't get discouraged, even when you don't see any traction. Because I quit YouTube about 15 times. I quit. And I would stop doing the video for a week or two. Not probably, I never probably made it to two. Probably like a week, 
maybe, maybe almost two. And I'm like, I quit. And then next thing you know, I'm doing another video. I'm like, girl, what is wrong with you? But this year, it started climbing. I saw 500. And once I hit six and 700, it's just, people just started adding, subscribing. And what helped me was those shorts. I haven't been doing a lot of shorts lately, but those shorts, they really hit. People really enjoy them because they have a short tension span. They don't want to be bothered for a long time. And they really enjoy those shorts. So do some shorts if you have a YouTube channel. But remember, with success, you're going to get, it's going to be interesting. You're going to see. You'll see. That's why my ex used to always tell me he knew. My ex-boyfriend knew. He would be like, Tammy, you'll see how people are. Wait till you, wait till you, um, wait till you, he would say, wait till you finish school or wait till you start your business. He would say that, wait till you get your money. You're going to see. And, and that, to me, him saying that, he knew. Like, Tammy, the way you are, oh, you're going to get, you're going to be successful. Except, uh, I can't say the word, but I'm going to be it. You're going to be successful. He knew it. But with success, you it's going to be some haters. I hate using that because somebody at church is always talking about that. It's like, oh, please quit talking about haters. But it's true. It is true. And, and as one of my friends would say, her sister would say, they may not hate what you have or even how you look. They hate how you are. They hate how you get through life. One obstacle hit you. You just punch through that obstacle. One obstacle on top of you, you get up under it. One up under you, you get up over it. One just too big, you plow straight through it. And they hate that because when something go wrong for them, they're crying, they're begging somebody else to bail them out, or they, they go into a, a black hole. And, you you know, some of us, we're real resilient. We may get down, but we never out. But I really don't care about what other people think. Sweat, blood, and tears, sacrifice. And with God, and with God, and with God, all things are possible, and you stay the course. Because this is your life to live. Can't live for other people. Can't live for your mama or your daddy. And I'm not living to make people happy. I'm living for myself. I'm all like God. I will always say that. Of course, I have my family. They love and they care for me, and I have some excellent, beautiful friends. So I do have other people, but at the end of the day, July 1st, I'm accountable to pay that rent. Tammy C. Walker, I'm signing off. Take care. Drop me comments. Hit that like button and have a happy, successful day. Bye-bye.